I'm Richard Jefferson, and I'm joined with... Wait, what's your name? Uh, J.R. Smith. The J.R. Smith, and this is Truth or Dad. Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Sean Evans and welcome back to another exciting episode of Truth or Dab presented by Google Pixel. It's the show where we give our guests two simple options, tell the truth or suffer the wrath of the last dab. And with basketball season hitting its crescendo, I'm very excited to welcome two legends in the game, Richard Jefferson and J.R. Smith. We're Richard, legends. Legends in the game. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Richard Jefferson, a 17-year vet who won a title in 2016 and who now graces your TV as an ESPN analyst, and J.R. Smith, a 15-year vet who's adding collegiate golfer and soon-to-be college graduate to a resume that already includes a pair of rings. Fellas, welcome to the show. All right, so let me explain what's going on here before we get started. Now, in front of you, you guys have a plate of wings that have all been doused in various versions of the last app. I have a set of deeply personal, potentially awkward questions for each of you, and when I ask you a question, you have a choice. Answer it honestly or escape the truth by eating a death wing. And Richard, yes. we're gonna start with you. Uh, okay, okay. You know, <laughs> over the course of your 17 year NBA career, you played with eight different teams and your vast experience, which NBA franchises front office executives are most out of their depth? Oh, what, like the ones that I played with? Yeah. I'm gonna say uh, the New Jersey Nets and Rod Thorne, just based off of trading me and then the team went to crap afterwards. <laughs> straight, <laughs> truth, <laughs> straight truth, straight truth from Richard truth. Jefferson straight here truth. on yeah. Wing One. Yeah, Rod, I, I had to tell him that to his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, JR, turn into you. During the 2011 NBA lockout, you signed with the Chinese Basketball Association's Golden Bulls, where you averaged more than 30 points per game and once scored 60 off the bench. Set the record straight. Is it true that you never attended a practice? And if so, what'd you do with your time? That is not true. <laughs> I actually I did attend practice for the first two weeks. They then told me, you don't have to come to practice. <laughs> So, so you said, all right. I was like, okay. He was like, listen, if you score 30 again, you don't have to you don't have to come to practice. The, honestly, true, true professional. And you know what? I think that makes sense. It's a results-driven league. You know, if you're scoring 30, yeah. why waste your time with practice? Moving on to wing number two. Richard, we're gonna stay with you. <sighs> okay. College basketball fans, they have to remember the dominance that you had at the University of Arizona, where your teams never lost more than eight games in a season. You played for a national title, but to avoid eating a death wing, I'm going to need you to say something genuine and nice about Duke and a gen- <laughs> There it goes. <laughs> Diving on in. Wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Wasn't going to happen. Mm. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Mm. It's- Richard, when you came in, you said you weren't sure if you were a spicy food guy. Naturally like a spicy food guy or? We're gonna find out. How's mm -hmm. it feeling right now? You look pretty good actually under the I, I'm gonna be really honest, like I would choose death before saying something about positive. So wing, this is, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> My ball head's starting to sweat. It's fine, what are you? <laughs> why are you laughing so hard, bro? JR. Is someone who has once fined $50,000 for trying to untie an opponent's shoelaces at the free throw line. I'm curious, looking back on your career. <laughs> Jeez, that's a car. <laughs> looking back on your career, what would you say was the fine or suspension that was most unfair? Probably, it, might be, it might be the shoelace because to me, it wasn't $50,000 worth of shoes. <laughs> it was one lace. It was one lace. Punishment didn't fit the crime. Yeah, it just didn't fit the crime for me. Like Prior history. Thing. Yeah, it was definitely. There was so many priors that I had. It was just like, you know what? That was the soup. <laughs> What's the soup? I'll let you tell you a better storyteller. No, but the question was to you. So, 2017, I'm in the cafeteria. You know, we're, we get great soup, by the way. It just so happened it was my favorite. It was. Uh, You're right, I am a much better storyteller than see? you. See? <laughs> better. I don't, I'll, I'll help him out. Basically what happened is that we're all in the food room. I was not there, I've heard this secondhand, but there was one certain coach that was chirping to JR about something, and JR decided to. It wasn't chirping, he kept touching me, and I told him to stop touching me, <laughs> and I threw my soup in. You threw, yeah, so it was a, a bowl of hot soup on a coach. Hot soup, hot wings, and we're moving on here. 
to round number three. So for round number three, I'm gonna ask you to use the Google Pixel folds that are on the tables in front of you. We have some pictures that we're gonna bounce off of you guys okay. to get a little bit of a reaction. My hands are slippery from the wings. I know. So Richard, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. So there might be some younger basketball fans who see you on TV as an ESPN analyst. They forget about the dazzling dunk highlights that you had nightly. Explain why this dunk over Klay Thompson is on your Mount Rushmore, but I also need a dunk that you were on the receiving end of that you'd like wiped from the internet history forever. The reason why this dunk is on the Mount Rushmore is because that was probably the greatest Christmas Day game of all time. It was the first time that we were the defending champions and the Warriors had added Kate, Kevin Durant, so that was the first time that everyone got to see that matchup. For me, what makes it better is that I was on the Warriors with when they drafted Clay. so to dunk on your boy, it, there's nothing greater than that. And one that I would like wipe from the books, probably Amari Stoudemire, he, he punched me pretty bad. That, that was a, a bad moment for me that everyone on the internet likes to bring up very, very consistently <laughs> at all times. <laughs> So that a lot one. Of people, though. I, that's what I say. I'm I like, like, dude, he's like, he's he's bigger than me. It's right. like he's like punching down. He's rude. <laughs> yeah. So that one I would like wiped. All right, Jr. Now on to you. Look at that beautiful swing. Do you see that golf swing oh, right man, there? I imagine that's what you're amazing. looking at. And as the story goes, you caught the golf itch when Moses Malone invited you to a charity tournament. And today you hold your own against some of the nation's top golfers. But I am curious, who is the celebrity or athlete that is the worst golfer you've ever shot around with? I would have to say Anthony Anderson. <laughs> Really? That's my boy. Yeah. And it was a long day. Love Just it. duffing? Yeah. We had a day. <laughs> it's a long long day. He's a great guy. I love him, sweetheart. But man. <laughs> Can't golf. This golf game needs some work. Last but not least, there's a couple pictures of you guys together. Aw. Oh, look at my guy. Look at that. Oh, look that's at my There you go. Just classics, both of you. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but you know that as teammates, you guys had a winning percentage of 670. That seems... That, well, that clock's seems, about right? That about clock's like, about you know, right? Seems like we were doing our job well, it, it, well at a high level. At a very high level. <laughs> yeah, very high level. Love so it. what I'd like you to do here, now that you guys have played so much ball together, is to look at each other and tell the other their best and worst quality as a teammate. Okay, that's okay. easy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Your best quality is uh, your honesty. Your best quality is definitely your honesty. <laughs> your worst quality is your honesty. <laughs> That's the first thing about you. <laughs> completely clear. What did you say? Oh, you think I won't throw this soup on you? <laughs> okay, I can't be serious with <laughs> No, your, your, your worst quality as a teammate is I can never take you serious, and nobody can. You play way too much. You never, I think I've seen you be serious twice in my life. Does he have a best quality, or you just want to leave it there? No, the best, best quality is his honesty. I will give him that. He's honest. He's, He's 100% honest, uh, well, whether you like it or not. Well, uh, speaking of 100% honest, we're on to here the final round. Okay. And Truth has been riding uh, you through this whole thing, JR. You are on to this final really? round. We are some truthful people. Richard, yes, congrats sir. on passing the four-year mark at ESPN. Thank you. How much money do you make yearly? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to take that bite, my buddy. <laughs> Let me say this, and I say this with all due respect. The only reason why I'll say this is because my, my contract is up in a couple months. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> going in, going in, and JR to close things out. Honest answer. If you guys both texted LeBron for a favor at the same time, who would he get back to first? <laughs> and down it goes. Richard Jefferson, J.R. Smith, a game of truth or dab, living to tell the tale. Anything that you want to say to the viewers at home before we put you into an ice bath? It, it, it's higher than it looks. For sure. <laughs> why did I take that big bite? Why'd you you wait, man, why did you take such a big Why did you wait till the end to start this? I didn't want, I didn't want to tell you that he wasn't going to hit you back for sure. <laughs> Whole milk too. Did they huh? suspend you for the soup or did they yeah. find you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A game's paycheck. Man.